Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture series on the contemporary world. This is the continuation of lesson number three, World Market and the Corporation. In the previous video, we were talking about the global market integration. And in this particular video, we will try to understand what is a global market and what is global market integration. Now, before we do that, it is highly encouraged that you will subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell. If this is the first time that you watch this video, it is highly encouraged also that you would watch the previous videos in this particular playlist. So you go to our channel, Infinite Wisdom, and click on that playlist which says The Contemporary World. If you want to dig deeper into these particular topics, it is uh, displayed in your screen a QR code that would uh, send you to a website that discusses these particular topics. According to the Cambridge Business English Dictionary, market integration is a situation in which separate markets for the same product becomes one single market. Or in other words, it unites multiple markets in the world. Integration is taken to denote a state of affairs or a process involving attempts to combine separate national economies into larger economic regions. Now, this is only possible, this market integration is only possible through free trade. And what is free trade? Now, free trade is an economic status where the economy acts in its natural course without any form of trade restrictions. Now, what are examples of trade restrictions? Number one, we have tariff. Now, what is a tariff? Tariff are duties or amounts to be paid by importation or exportation of products. Economic sanctions are government actions to restrict any form of economic exchange or some form of economic exchange for a particular country, group, company, or individual. And number three is embargo. Embargo is a restriction to trade on another country. Now, in the absence of these three, we will have a free trade. And free trade is the enabler of global market integration and is an enabler of globalization and internationalization. It creates the world a singular economy and singular entity without restriction and government intervention, or at least very limited government intervention. That is free trade. What are areas in the world wherein these free trade agreements are dominating as an economic principle? We have the North American Free Trade Agreement, the Association or ASEAN Free Trade Agreement or AFTA. We have the Southern Common Market. We have Common Market of Eastern and Southern Africa. Now, NAFTA is a free trade agreement between three member nations, Canada, U.S., and Mexico. It is effective on January 1, 1994, although tariffs were fully abolished until, uh, until 2008. Although by this particular time, if I'm not mistaken, NAFTA have already been abolished, and there is a brand new agreement on this particular region in the world. By 2014, the total trilateral merchandise trade exceeded $1.12 trillion. Trade with Canada and Mexico supports more than 140,000 small and medium-sized businesses and over 3 million jobs in the United States. Gains in Canada are reportedly even higher with 4.7 million new jobs added since 1993, and Canada is also the largest exporter of goods to the United States. This is the effect of NAFTA, or North, North American Free Trade Agreement. Next, we have ASEAN Free Trade Area. 
This was originally created by the original members of the ASEAN nation or Association of Southeast Asian Nation, which were Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. Four countries have subsequently joined Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, and Cambodia. The AFTA was signed in January of 1992 in Singapore. The bloc has largely removed all export and import duties on items traded within or between the nation. It also entered into agreements with a number of nations, including China, eliminating tariffs of around 90% of imported goods in the region. AFTA nations had a combined GDP of 2.3 trillion in 2012 and their home to 600 million people. The Southern Common Market or MECOSOR, a Latin American single market, its uh, full members are Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Venezuela is a full member but has been suspended since uh, no, December 1 of 2016. Meanwhile, Bolivia obtained its full membership on July 7, 2015, established by a Treaty of Asuncion in 1991 and a Protocol of Oropeto in 1994. The four have combined gross domestic product of roughly $2.9 trillion. Latin America's second largest group of the Pacific Alliance, which comprises Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru have a combined of about $1.8 trillion in GDP. Next is the common market of Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA. The member states of COMESA are Burundi, the Comoros, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Djibouti, Egypt, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Libya, and so on, formed on December 1994, an annual export bill exists, $80 billion, and the organization is a significant marketplace, both within Africa and globally. Comesa ultimately aims to remove all barriers to intra-regional trade, starting with preferential tariffs and working towards a free towards a tariff-free common market and economic union. Now, what are the trade issues that bars, or that hinders free trade and globalization and internationalization and marketing integration to push through to all the regions in the world? What are those trade issues? There are two. Number one is protectionism, and the second one is nationalism. Now, economic protectionism is an economic perspective whereby countries exposes imported products on higher taxes to include or to induce fair competition in the domestic market with local producers. And the second one is economic nationalism, an ideology where the government intervenes on economic matters to protect local industry through economic control. While it is true that the world is advancing towards globalization and towards market integration, there are issues that goes with it, especially on the, on the fact that the local economy might be deteriorated by the reason of imported goods that would eventually kill the industries, smaller industries in the local market or in the domestic market. And so, let's say for example, if we have a manufacturing plant for shoes in the Philippines, and we will import a lot of shoes without tariff and priced significantly lower than our domestic produce from other countries in the world, it would eventually affect the local industry, thereby slowly killing the said industry and would result at some particular point into rapid unemployment and would eventually destroy the economy. And so that's the reason why there is economic protectionism and economic nationalism. 
that of course prevents the spread or the rapid spread of globalization, internationalization, and market integration. Now, what are global corporations? Now, global corporations are entities that have capacity to trade all over the world. In the Philippines, a corporation is an artificial being, a juridical person created by operation of law, like human beings, have the right of succession, have powers, attributes, and properties. In general term, it is any organization that enables trade in a geographic location. When a corporation transcends beyond singular territory, it becomes global corporation. So what are examples of contemporary global corporations? We have Apple, we have Microsoft, we have Alphabet, we have Amazon, and we have Facebook. Now, these corporations are five of the most expensive corporations in the world that is significantly dominating in the world. Now, we have Apple, the most expensive company in the world by probably around $2.06 trillion in market capitalization. In effect, Apple has a bigger gross domestic product than the Philippines. Now, we have the gross domestic product of the Philippines is only around $400 billion. Apple Corporation is bigger than the Philippines by its market capitalization of $2.06 trillion. And we have Microsoft Corporation also around $1 trillion plus in market capitalization. And we have Alphabet. Now, you might not know what Alphabet is, but it's a, fair, but it's a very popular company that is the owner of Google, YouTube, the owner of uh, Gmail, and all other services of Google and YouTube. We also have Amazon, home of the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos. And we also have Facebook, the most popular social media site in the world. Now, if you look at these particular companies, it transcends beyond the natural boundaries. It operates globally and worldwide. And it has created a system that makes everyone around the world adapts the trend of the modern time, which is integration of the market. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next lesson.